Right guys, welcome down to my round review of a Players Series Tour event at Preston Golf Club, uh, which I've just competed in, just managed to get home. And it was a... Uh, it was an eye-opening round in many ways, I think. So let's start with the score, which <laughs> I think is always a good place to start. Um, I, I shot two over. I shot two over. And when I look back on the round, the way I started it, actually two over probably isn't that bad. So I bogeyed my first two holes and then managed to stabilise the ship, had I think three birdies in three bogeys after that point. Um, so I finished up at two over par. But it was just the manner in which I shot two over par which was probably the most disappointing thing today. Well, not the most disappointing. I need to explain this better. <laughs> so on the first two holes today, I was I was a little bit nervous in respect that over the last few days I've been practicing, but I've been I've been a little bit erratic. I've been all over the place as far as my ball striking goes. My putting has been pretty poor as well. Now the first two holes today, I was I was feeling nervous and. What was really clear to me and actually helped me calm, calm me down after the first two holes is I noticed that I was very nervous about simply just playing golf. Now, what I mean by that is when I was over the ball, I was nervous about hitting it. I was unsure about what I was doing. I was thinking more about, oh, just get it on the green rather than attack the flag. And I had a chip on the second hole. I hit a good tee shot and then I hit a I thought a pretty good approach actually, but it went through the green. Pin was at the back and it left a delicate little chip. But all I was thinking over was the chip was, oh, just get it on the green, just hopefully let it roll down, just get it on the green. And I ended up hitting it to about five foot. If I was hitting that shot in a practice round, if I was hitting that shot in a practice round, it was literally try and chip it in. Try and chip this ball in the hole. When it gets into competition play, I am simply just not quite there mentally as far as being able to free up, loosen up myself to begin with. And this is the interesting thing because after that hole, I was just managed to get it right in my head that, listen, I've just got to play. I've got to try and relax here. Good drive here, good second hole, my put on the third. And the third stroke index one. The toughest, the toughest hole on the course here. Great drive, eight time to about 20 foot and then sank a very, very good put. And from that point on, I actually managed to control my emotions very, very well today. Even when things weren't going quite to plan because the greens weren't great, they were bobbling around a bit, had some funny bounces as well. Even when it wasn't going to plan, I managed to stay pretty focused, pretty in the moment, hit some pretty good shots as well, uh, hit some tough ones as well, but it was overall from that point an okay round. One of the big disappointment, disappointments um, from today was the 6th and the 7th, their par 5s. Now, one of them was straight downwind. Well, straight downwind, pretty much downwind. Hit driver just lit into the left rough, hit 6 iron just to the front. And rather than chipping, I decided to put, which I think was the right play. There was a lot of grass in between me and the green. But I hit a pretty good put to about 7 foot, missed it. And then on the next, I was about 50 yards away for a wedge shot. I hit a terrible wedge shot, ended up with a par. So... Those two par fives, which both were reachable if I hit a really, really good couple of shots on the um, on the seventh as well, but I just ended up walking off with pars. Now, during, again, practice rounds, I'll be eating those holes up. I'll be so disappointed if I walked off there with a bird, without a birdie. And again, that was the case today. And all throughout the rest of the round, I hit some good shots. I hit 50% of fairways, um, but when I missed the fairways, it was only just off. So I actually drove the ball relatively well. 66% of greens in regulation. That probably wasn't as good as it should have been uh, because I was putting myself into position to hit a high percentage of that. But having said that, that's still an okay amount. Um, 31 puts, that includes quite a lot of two puts. Because of the greens I was hitting, I was not leaving myself a short enough put to give myself a real chance. I'd say I probably had about, in those 18 holes... I probably had about eight or nine birdie opportunities and uh, managed to convert three of them, which on those greens probably wasn't the worst performance, if I'm honest with you, because they were jumping around. There was a little bit of luck if they went in or not. Um, the one hole which I'm going to really let myself off with is the 11th. 
Um, I had a two foot putt for a par, hit it and it just jumped left and almost missed the hole, which obviously annoyed me, but I managed to get a good up and down on the next. Now, overall, as you can tell, two over there after that start, managing to settle myself down, having the birdies, having some unfortunate bogeys. At the end of the day, it's not that bad of a score, however. The one thing which became so clear at the end of today is I walked off the 18th and I knew, I knew that I played that entire round within my comfort zone. Now what I mean by that is I went out poorly, which I often do in competition, so this isn't just a one-off thing, then managed to stabilise the ship and near the end I was a bit more positive, trying to attack a little bit more, managed to birdie the 17th, actually got unlucky my second, I could have had a good eagle chance. Um, and I chipped up and just tapped in for a birdie. But I was playing within my comfort zone. I was getting myself behind early, then battling back, and then finishing a two over in and around level par. And if I look at my tournaments, I've obviously had that big gap in the middle when I've been injured and then the comps when I've come back. A couple of two overs at Hawkston when I struck the ball quite well. More out and I'm just forgetting about because I was so ill. I'm playing constantly around that level par mark. So just a little bit under, just a little bit over and then a few odd rounds here and there where I'm a long way over. But it's within my comfort zone. I am playing consistent golf in and around that mark on any course I play in competition, doesn't matter if it's tough like it was today, it was a relatively tough day today at Preston, or an easy course, I'm always in and around the same number, always. Now conversely, I've pulled up Ryan O'Neill's scorecard from today. Now Ryan's probably the best player in the Lancashire region at this moment in time. He's pretty much wins most of the player series event. He's very, very consistent. And he's always in and around four or five under par, which on these courses you need to be. And Ryan also made it through first stage of open qualifying as well. And when I look at his scorecards, the one thing I notice is he's playing within his comfort level, but he's constantly under par. And he would always have that ability to go that little bit lower if he catches fire. What this means is I've got to shift my game probably around six shots lower if I want any chance of trying to get in the open. Six shots lower at the least. Now that is going to take a lot of work. It's going to take a lot of work. Within my swing, within my game to make it more consistent, yes. But also mentally to get myself in the correct headspace, if that's the right term to use, to play better golf. I believe, I do believe that I am a good golfer. I honestly do. I think I can shoot some very low under par scores, but I'm just not letting myself at this moment in time. I'm not able to get out of my way. I'm not able to get out of this comfort zone, which I seem to be in around level par to one to two over, one under. It's just constantly around that number. No matter how I play, it's always around there. So I need to figure out how to just get myself to that next level, to get myself under. What this tournament really allows me to do is because this is basically the last of the summer series events if you want to look at it like that we now go into the winter period where there are plenty of events to play in it gives me an opportunity to assess where i'm at to really assess my weaknesses to have a very good overhaul of my swing which i've got some pretty good ideas about what i want to do with my technique going forwards Work on my short game, which I think needs a lot of work, but also work on my mental game as well. And I've got, obviously, some good ideas about what I need to do with that as well. It's going to be a lot of work. It's going to be a, a winter of discontent. This I'm going to have to shake things up like I've really never shaken stuff up before. Because if I just carry on what I'm doing at this moment in time... I am literally just going to keep on shooting around that level level par mark. And whilst on the face of it, that's not a obviously a terrible thing to do, I want to be better than that. I want to be getting under par. And I want my bad scores to be around level par. I don't want my bad scores to be able to shoot up to you know, those high 70s like they did at more Alton, yes, even though I was feeling like the world was ending. I don't want to have those scores in me. Now, obviously, this is golf. 
Those will happen at some point. They always have to. But I do not feel capable at this moment in time of going low. I don't feel that I'm capable of going under par to five to six under during a competition round. In the course vlogs or when I'm just practicing, yes, I can do. But it's a different mental approach that I seem to be taking into tournament play. Over the last week or so, I would say that I've probably been... I just felt that I've not quite had the same motivation that I had throughout this year. I think because it is reaching the end of the season, but today gives me a little bit more of a kickstart to say, listen, you've got to get going on this stuff. You've got to start working harder at these things. You've got to start mixing stuff up and doing stuff I've not done before, which is good. It's good. It's good to just finally have that going through my head that, you know, this is, it's reached the point now where if I just carry on, I'll just carry on doing this, these scores. It was great playing with uh, Andy Carter today. I think that's one thing that did help me relax really throughout the, the rest of the round as well. The fact that we could just have a bit of a laugh and a, a bit of a banter with each other. Uh, Rob as well, who we played with as well, had a bad back nine, but pretty steady throughout. Um, Andy, by the way, today had two shots where he hit it into the middle of forests and ended up into the fairway. I've never seen such luck. Managed to pip in my one though, and that's really what brought out more of a smile than anything else today. Um, I finished in the competition tied ninth. Um, again, which isn't too bad. I mean, Ryan O'Neill was four under and he won by three shots. So he was the standout performer. Graham Cox was one under. A couple at even, a uh, few at one, then a few at two as well. And then he went down to the threes and the fours and then higher down to the bottom as well. Right, guys, so thank you so, so much for watching. Um, please comment, as always, below. Let me know what you think. Share the video around. Like it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Um, loads of stuff coming this weekend as well, as far as course vlogs go. Some course vlogs that <laughs> you're going you're gonna to enjoy watching. Uh, let's put it that way. It wasn't the nicest to play, but funny to watch anyway. So stay tuned for those. And then next week getting my head around what I'm doing. Right guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.